Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Kylie if you're new and today might be a little bit of a surprise because today I am reviewing Texas Chainsaw 3D from 2013 and you and I, we might feel a little bit differently about this film. It received a 19% on Rotten Tomatoes but with an audience score of 40% and if you're not familiar with the movie, here's a synopsis. A young woman travels to Texas to collect an inheritance. Little does she know that an encounter with a chainsaw wielding killer is part of the reward. As always, I do have some fun facts about the movie, then I'll get into my spoiler-free review, and then I will get into my spoiler-filled breakdown. So to kick it off with some fun facts, this is actually a direct sequel to the original 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It ignores all the sequels and obviously does not include the two remakes. In the opening scene, Bill Mosley, who portrayed Top, I almost said Top Chop, but Bill Mosley, who played Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw 2, he portrays Drayton Sawyer, who is the cook from the first two films. This particular Texas movie has the distinction of featuring three different actors as level Leatherface. Gunnar Hansen is the one from the archive footage and then Sam McKenzie plays the young Leatherface and finally Don Yeager plays Leatherface for the majority of the film. This is also the final film of Gunnar Hansen. Not only does he portray Leatherface in the opening scenes which are actually from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but he portrays a relative named Boss Sawyer in the opening of this movie. And this marks the first time that he has returned to this franchise since the original film. In interviews he said that he was actually approached to be in various films throughout the franchise but none of them offered a salary that made it worth it for him. There was a day on set when they had massive fire stunts to perform and on that particular day it was 106 degrees. Trey Songs stars in this movie as well as Alexandra Daddario and both of them admitted to never having seen the original before starring in this movie. I guess Alexandra hadn't seen any of the films of the franchise but Trey Songs had seen the remake and the one from 2006. The character of Sheriff Hooper is an obvious nod to Toby Hooper, the original writer and director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Marilyn Burr Burns also returns for this movie and she plays the character of Verna. This film and Butcher Boys in 2012 were her first movies in over 28 years. But that's not including her cameo in Texas Chainsaw The Next Generation because she wasn't even credited for that. So this film actually features four actors returning from previous installments, which breaks the previous record of three from The Next Generation. And finally, Dan Yeager is the tallest leather face up until this point at six foot six. That does it for my fun facts, so let's get into the spoiler free review of this movie. Brace yourselves, okay? I need to get something off my chest. I didn't think that it was atrocious. A lot of you guys were like, oh, you gotta get through this next one, ooh, yikes. And there was some validity to that. Some parts were atrocious. At times I was like, okay, who signed off on this? But at other times I was like, you know what? The story is kind of good. I obviously can't really spoil the story right now, so I will get into that later. But despite a pretty poor execution, I actually found the story, the plot of this movie, to be pretty interesting. There are some pretty decent twists and a really, a pretty twisty ending. And I'm also becoming a sucker for 2000s horror. I already was one, but it's just been so cemented by the few films that I've watched recently. And I know that this came out in 2013, but it was filmed in 2011 and the early 2000s vibes are strong with this one. There are a lot of bad things about this movie. I just wanted to get one of the positives out of the way first because the story, I genuinely found it interesting. Unfortunately, I do think that the writing, the dialogue in particular, and the acting just kind of ruined the story. Also, the casting was very questionable. I just kind of find it strange when music artists decide to like dip their toes in and just star in a horror movie very randomly. Because Trey Songs, what was he doing here? I'm also biased in watching his performance just because he is a bad person. I don't know if you heard, but immediately after he himself recovered from COVID, he hosted a 500 person maskless party at a club. Idiot, professional idiot. And most of the acting was not good, but it does star Alexandra Daddario and I actually am a big fan of her. When she starred in Percy Jackson in 2010, oh whoo! When I tell you I wanted to be her, I had a crush on her, I all of the above, I was infatuated with her. So to see her in this mess, it, it was kind of funny, it was a good time. Tell me why though, especially with the costuming, tell me why she looks like a Tim Burton character. I think it's just the dark clothes on her very pale skin, maybe the dark hair, I don't know. Kind of just has that gothic early 2000s vibe. That's also kind of exactly what I wanted to look like as a child. Anyways, but most of the other acting in this movie, as I said, was just not really good. But I do attribute some of it to bad direction because even if you are a talented actor, it is really hard to deliver lines that are written poorly. Especially if the director doesn't really give you any leeway way, if they don't let you just kind of say what comes naturally. Sometimes they're like, no, you have to say what's on the page. So they could have been limited by that as well. Trey songs though, no. 
Definitely not. I don't know why he was there. Also, I don't know why did I have to watch him play pool while he listened to his own music? What was that supposed to do for me? It also irks me that they didn't watch the original before starring in this sequel because they couldn't... I don't know. I don't feel like they could have totally done it justice without understanding the original vibes. I digress. Oh wait, no, that's not a digression. That's actually kind of relevant because I did like the fact that this was a direct sequel to the original. I think it just gave them a lot more room to explore this particular story without having to worry about any of the sequels and that canon and whatnot. I think it just made things a lot less complicated and I actually preferred the way that they went with a sequel instead of following more the remake route. Because in that way, I think that there was less room for them to rely on copying scenes from the original, which some of the other movies in this franchise have a terrible habit of doing. Which honestly, when it comes to cash grab remakes and sequels such as this, originality and, you know, not copying the original, that's all you can really ask for in my opinion. Because you know it's probably not gonna top the original. Was the direction they took with this film a little misguided? Maybe. A little dumb? A little dumb, maybe? Yeah. But to their credit, I found it interesting. And that's pretty much that on my spoiler-free review. I don't really recommend this movie. But if you like the original, I think just, just in terms of the story, not in terms of acting, execution, dialogue, anything else, just in terms of the story, I think that it is a worthy sequel to the original. If you're a fan of the original, it's an interesting continuation of this family story. Plus there are a couple big appearances by old actors of the franchise, and so it's nice to see them. Overall, if you like cheesy early 2000s stuff and cheesy slashers, I think that you would enjoy this movie. There's also a pretty good amount of gore, which is not my thing, but if you're a gore hound, again, and you don't really need a strong plot or anything, I think you'll like this movie. It's not good. Um, I just, I don't personally think that it's quite as bad as some of my subscribers had led me to believe, because I actually think it's enjoyable to watch, which really, when it comes down to it, that's all you really want in a movie. You want entertainment. You want to enjoy yourself. So I liked it. I don't really recommend recommend it though. Okay, now it's time for my spoiler section and I am just gonna break down the plot, go by plot point. There's not too much for me to get into, but there are some things that I want to point out. So to get started, let's just talk about the opening credits as always. I wasn't a super big fan of the opening credits of this movie, even though it had a bunch of shots from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm sure it was really cool for fans of the original movie because they got to see some of those scenes on the big screen again in the theater. However, I just found it a little bit jarring when they transitioned to the actual opening of the movie. Because we went from 1974 shot on film, a little bit more grainy, to 2011 digital, you know, they tried, they put kind of a grainy filter on it, but it was just such an obvious switch. It was just kind of a drastic change in aesthetic and it was really obvious. Honestly, that probably just bothers me because I'm being snobby. I'm a film student. I'm like, the aesthetic, it must be consistent. But I guess I just, I wish that they had gone the route that most of the other movies had taken where they made their own kind of experimental film opening credits. Because despite some of the movies being really bad, some of the opening with the it, these experimental gritty shots and stuff have been really cool. So we didn't really have that with this one. Also with the opening, um, I don't feel like they should have shown the 1974 clips because it, it's just, it makes the lack of continuity so apparent. There are all these new family members that just were, they were not there. They, they weren't there previously. In the original, I think there's only what, four family members, right? And then all of a sudden they have their whole living room full of these different family members that we hadn't seen before and they're all holding guns and stuff. So to go straight from the opening credits with the original that showed all the original family to go straight into the opening of this movie where there's all these new family members, just a kind of a weird choice to me. I don't know. I just don't feel like there's really any excusing that because it's just such a blatant disruption of continuity. I don't know. Am I alone in that? Unless, I guess, unless this film was not intended Ended for an audience full of fans of the original movie, but then again, they had clips of the original, so... So right off the bat, continuity is not very good, but I think that it was actually a really cool origin story for Heather. Before I move on, the last thing about that opening scene is I feel like they did Leatherface a little bit dirty in that scene because the mask, I, it's like... It looks like plastic, kind of. It doesn't actually look like skin. I, it doesn't look very grimy. It's not, I don't know. I just didn't like the mask. Anyways, moving on. I have some rather... <laughs> Uh, I have some rather interesting notes here that I didn't really elaborate on while I was watching the movie, I guess. So now I'm going to try to decipher what they mean. I think I wrote this down when we were meeting our characters in the grocery store for the first time. And I said, 
<laughs> and I said, acting is bad, just boobs. <laughs> what I think I was trying to say is that most of the focus of the scene was just on this new character's boobs because she was in her grocery store like working outfit but it was like all unbuttoned and it just her boobs were out and her acting was pretty bad. <laughs> that is my best interpretation of this note. <laughs> okay this next one is easy. I don't know how this was made in 2013. It feels like 2003. I feel like that speaks for itself honestly. <laughs> just everything about it from the cheesy acting, the weird filter on the movie, the, the wardrobe especially. It definitely felt early 2000s. And the <laughs> and this next one, this next one, <laughs> god damn it, this next one says, now the hitchhiker is sexy, and because he was. Again, that kind of speaks for itself. I, I do like the fact that they did kind of switch that up, because that is one scene that they did take from the original. However, they did make it different enough, and the hitchhiker's plot was different enough to the remake and the original that I actually liked it. And like I said, he, he was, he was sexy. Oh wait, oh god, there's more. Okay. <laughs> oh no! This next one... <laughs> Stop. Okay. <clears throat> this next one says... <sighs> okay. This next one says, hot cop, hot cop. <laughs> Oh, my laugh is so ugly. I'm sorry, I really wish I had a cute laugh. It's just the, the fact of life that I don't have a cute laugh and you guys have to live with that. So basically, yeah, there was um, there was a hot sheriff in this movie. Uh, yet again, speaks for itself. I guess I was just really feeling the cast of this movie. Ah, yes, okay. Okay, this girl does not know how to smoke. <laughs> During the scene where they're still partying, they don't know anything is wrong. I forget what her name is. What is her name? Oh, her name was Nikki. Okay, so when Nikki is just sitting outside and she's like smoking a joint, presumably, it <laughs> she would just like hold it in her mouth and not inhale it. She would just kind of you know what I mean? And then she throws it on the ground when there is still like half of the joint left. I just think it's funny that like apparently all of the makers, like the movie makers and writers of the Texas Chainsaw franchise don't know the first thing about the etiquette of smoking. I talked about that during my review of the 2003 remake. I just think it's funny. I think it adds to the layer of cheese and it's fun. Anyway, the next topic, the gore in this movie. Wow. We did get somewhat of a remake of the hook scene in this movie, yes sir. And they did make it their own. It didn't feel like a copying really of any of the other films because in this scene they cut him in half on the hook. So that being said, the gore in this movie was a little bit much for my taste, but I appreciated the differences that they brought in. But nobody cared about that guy. He only had a couple of lines. He was obviously just kind of a meatbag throwaway character. And honestly, so were the other friends too. None of the characters in this movie were very likable except for Heather. Heather is such a good person. She's honestly kind of a pushover, but like in specifically, she saved her friend from Leatherface by getting him to chase her instead of Nikki, who was a terrible friend, obviously, right? Like cheating with her boyfriend. You know, just a poor Heather. She ended up putting her faith into everybody and then everybody betrayed her boyfriend, her best friend, that hot cop. Speaking of, the cop turning out to be bad, I was kind of glad about that. It feels a little bit more realistic, you know, even though I wanted him for her, just it feels more realistic. Also, a police officer shot a girl in the head and the other police officers were like we didn't see that like that didn't happen just covering for each other and then in the end that one cop let her and Leatherface go still covering things up I found that very interesting this movie felt I don't know a little bit ahead of its time also during that scene oh my gosh that one line that was like do you think cuz that was so weird. That was such corny writing, because right, because all of a sudden there's this solidarity with her and this guy that just butchered all of her friends. All of a sudden they're key keying and it's like, oh, do your thing, cuz. I've already mentioned it, just truly abhorrent writing in this movie. It was just weird to me because he murdered all of her friends, but then I thought about it and I was like, okay, well, maybe she thought that she couldn't get out of there alive without his help, and that was fair enough. Fair, fair enough. enough. But then in the end, she ends up picking up her family torch to take take care of him and lock him in the basement. He's like a generational family pet kind of, right? And so she decides to take care of him after this. I know there might've been a little bit of emotional complexity with that given that now, you know, there's this familial bond, he helped to save her life. But if I were her, how could I possibly just want to brush off the rest of my life that I had been living, brush off the fact that this monster had killed all my friends and then take care of him by locking him away in a basement and bringing him meals three times a day. I liked it as a twist ending, 
but two plus two is not equaling four. I would love to know how you guys feel about that. Although I will say with the end credit scene that followed this with um, her adoptive parents suggestively getting butchered by Leatherface, it did kind of nudge the ending in the right direction for me. I was like, okay, maybe Heather's life wasn't that great. I mean, her parents didn't really love her. Her boyfriend was cheating on her. Her best friend was cheating with her boyfriend. She was just working in a grocery store cutting meat. There's nothing wrong with that, but just, you know, it's not really like the life. So I guess she wasn't really leaving much of a life behind. I just, I mean, still though, to commit yourself to living in this creepy old mansion, it is a mansion though. No, I don't think I would do it. I don't know. What would you guys do? What would you guys do? Let me know. I'm curious to know your opinions on the ending of this movie in particular. Just if you're gonna have spoilers in it, put like spoiler at the top of your comment maybe just so other people don't get the movie spoiled. But yeah, I don't really want to get in too deep with this movie. I don't have a ton to say. It's not really, it's not really a very, you know, emotionally complex movie or anything like that. Pretty much your standard cheesier slasher. And I just want to reiterate that I didn't hate it. I actually enjoyed watching it. I think this is one that I'll be able to rewatch. I'm a big fan of Alexander Daddario. I'm just kind of a fan of this movie. It's just just, it was so bad that it was kind of good. If you are not a fan of this movie, if you did not enjoy this movie, I hope that at the least you enjoyed this review. If you're new, I'm doing Vlogmas right now, but typically I post three days a week, so it's still a good amount of content on a regular basis. I also have a vlog channel that'll be linked down below, as well as all my social media, if you want to follow me on like Instagram and Twitter. Tomorrow I will be talking about the season finale of The Mandalorian, and now I know that this is a horror channel. I typically talk about horror stuff, but it's also my channel, and I can do whatever I want, and I have to talk about the ending of Mandalorian, because it was insane. So hopefully at least some of you guys will join me for that. But that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye!